Woohoo! Welcome back to Big Hell As today, we bring you something slightly different. We are going to bring you a tactic rundown of our Gagan Pressing Tactic. This tactic is saved on the Steam Workshop and is the save that we used on our Gagan Pressing series, which will be linked somewhere above. It was a very successful tactic. A almost, dare I say it, game-breaking tactic. We went 30 games unbeaten. 30 or 32 games unbeaten across all competitions. Uh, only that's four games in the Premier League all season. Scored a lot. And not only that, with Liverpool, we won the Premier League twice and the Champions League in two seasons. So it was pretty successful. So what I'll be doing in, in this video is running you through the base tactic. The... Um, how we used to how we deployed the tactic the team instructions and the player instructions that we used having a look at some of the goals the way that we scored in some of those games and the players and the philosophy of those players that we brought in to make the system work but first first the philosophy of gig impressing so the gig impressing style we've, we used jürgen klopp's style of gig impressing is uh, counter pressing is the translation of getting a pressing, and that means to close down as quick as you can and win the ball back from your opponent, which means getting everyone to close down in the top third. So win the ball back in your opposition's half, attack very quickly and score goals. Put pressure on defenders, and the idea being you put pressure on the players that you believe are weakest on the ball, and therefore you're more likely to win the ball back, and you can double up and triple up on players to put them under pressure. Uh, before they have a time to make a pass and if they do have to make a pass it's likely to be a long pass that another player will then be able to pick up and run with and it is a style that works very well in football manager as i will show you later but we worked uh, a couple of different formations as we started with a 4-3-3 to start with to see if we can get the most we went strikerless so we had more people uh, so we had sort of no strike uh, yeah no striker funny enough for striking us and we had these guys doing the closing down we then went to a defensive midfield formation a kind of flying v that didn't work. We settled on the 4-2-3-1 for a very uh, specific reason. Is that if you need to win the ball back in this area, you need to have most of the players playing in this area. So it's like when you had a DM, these guys were having to run forward and close the ball down, or these guys were coming in. Well, if you actually just move that person right up here, then all the action happens here. You have the wing backs coming on and playing alongside the central midfielders. You have a lot of players in the final third making those challenges and closing the guys down. So we went with a 4-2-3-1. We had a standard goalkeeper on defend. We had fullbacks on support and a ball playing defender and a central defender. When we had the ball, we wanted to play out, make sure that the, the, the defender was playing good balls either into the centres or finding those wingers if he could. In the midfield too, we had a ball winning midfielder and a box to box midfielder. Ball winning midfielder on defend. He dropped back if the uh, fullbacks got too far forward and acted as a three with these guys. And the box to box midfielder, again, getting back in defending when necessary and also late surges into the box. Um, where required for the uh, for the attacking threat. And then a front four, the spearhead, the guys that got all the goals. We played with a inside forward, a winger on um, attack, as well as inside forward on attack, uh, advanced playmaker on support, and a striker on poacher. So like I said, we did try with shadow strikers, bringing Firmino back and, and playing that way, but Sturridge just was immense. If you look here, Sturridge got 46 goals in that last uh, season. 46. Um, and the idea being that what worked really well was Mane stayed out wide and put the balls in constantly. Sorry, Jair as a poacher was always on the end. Otherwise, you had Coutinho or Chieta coming in late. And if not, Sala was at the back post looking to knock him in. And then from this side, Sala was cutting in and playing as almost a second striker a lot of the time. He got a lot of goals as well. It was very, very successful. So that's the, the, ba the base layout, as it were. If we have a look at the team instructions. So we played this formation. We didn't change it home and away. We didn't come up with too many problems playing it. We kind of went out and did a, a, on a, on a wheel score more goals than you, which is how this tactic works. You will get lots of goals with this tactic. Um, so we played on attacking all the time. Played on very fluid, uh, which just means that the players contribute to all phases of the game. So defenders um, will contribute to the attacking phase and strikers will um, contribute to the defending phase. And because we were pushing so high up the pitch, it meant that you had your strikers, your wingers, your advanced playmaker, all making tackles as well as your defenders. And when you need to get forward, your your wing backs and uh, fullbacks, sorry, were providing width down the side. So we played on a higher tempo, played on a balanced width, but it went pretty wide anyway, based on what we were playing. Played slightly higher, but it's real high up the pitch uh, because we're on attacking, using the offside trap, closing down more, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, use tight marking, get stuck in. Get stuck in is good in the top leagues, I find. 
just because you your players shuttle less and they just put the foot in and when we had two or three players overloading and marking up then get stuck in worked because if one of them missed there was a second guy there anyway um, as you can see from the tempo and how we're playing this was a very intensive tactic so you need a good squad a good with good depth which luckily Liverpool do have we then had exploit the, the flanks on this is something we added in the second season which was the, the, we started the second season and the, the formation wasn't quite working the way it had the first season we'd won the Premier League in the first season second season we came back and lost a couple of games we got drawn two losses to start the season uh, and it seemed that the, the game had learnt the tactic so we whacked on exploit the left and right flank and that seems to have fixed the, fixed the problems. So they're on passing the space on very key for this tactic. When you ball the bit, win the ball back, that the whoever's winning it is looking to pump the ball straight away to those attacking guys and putting it behind them. So you've got quick wingers and inside forwards and front men that when they get the ball, the defenders if they get the ball back, they look up, they want to hit it long, they either go wide through the middle or out to the other side, and they want someone there to be running onto it. Worked like a dream. Uh, passing directors we kept mixed we didn't want it too short we didn't want them playing like a short tiki taka style we wanted them but we didn't again want them just booting it long because direct passing sometimes causes your possession to go out the window so mixed passing worked perfectly for us left the creative freedom and the movement around could have put Rome from positions on a bit didn't really need to uh, and left the attacking on the final third as well because everyone got forward and was getting involved so that was the tactic we like i said we left that the only thing we changed was exploiting the flanks in the second season other than that we pretty much kept this standard for the first the, the two seasons and as i can see here yeah, the intensity this is a high uh, intensity tactic so you've got to be careful you've got to be able to rest players and you've got to be able to um be prepared for injuries because you need to rest them between games making sure you've got rotation because they will get injured and then we'll get tired from playing this formation we did have some issues with longer shots um which means if we did in certain games i'd i'd um, put work into box on to get them playing kind of on the floor and get it into the box for shooting but only if it was a problem in that game would i use that otherwise i'd leave it as it was so if we look at the team that we finished the second season with we did bring in some players to to bolster where uh, liverpool were, were a bit shy and that mainly came in defense so we brought in uh donna rummer as a uh, goalie for the second season we did have uh Mignolet in for pretty much the whole of the first season, we sold Carius to Paris Saint-Germain, I think it was. It was weird. But yeah, second season, we brought in Donnarumma. I just I decided I wanted a goalie, and I just spent all the money that we had. So that was a bit of a... I didn't really need him. Um, then we brought in two centre-backs as well. We brought in Rog Mignoli and Laporte. Laporte coming in in the second season, just again to shore up that defence. Gomez did well as, as like a third coming in where necessary. But those two... Rogmanoli, we brought in first season, did uh, an outstanding job of just shoring up that central defence. Um, and, if, sorry, looking at player instructions, these guys, we had them on close down much less. So everybody else, uh, oh, sorry, and the wing backs we had on close down less. So the the very, or whatever it was, closing down much more that set on was for these front five. Oh, six, sorry. Oh, I you knows. Yeah, the close down we had on was for the front six. We wanted to try and keep a defensive line as stable as possible. So if it did come through, there was a line waiting. The fullbacks got involved where necessary, but the, the centre-backs we wanted to keep dead set. When we played the first season, we found that sometimes these guys would wander off and all of a sudden you're getting balls played through diagonally and we were, we were just letting in goals. So putting these central defenders on to close down much less meant they don't jump into tackles and you expect your two midfielders, when they do get back, as they should do, to get involved and make those tackles. So we then had uh, Robinson on the left, who is here, Andrew Robinson, from the beginning. And we've got Alec, Trent Alexander-Arnold as the right back. We did bring in Hugo Mallow first season and got rid of Nathaniel Klein. I didn't really like Klein, didn't really perform. Mallow did well. And then Alexander-Arnold, when he uh, got a bit more game time, we would just play, threw him straight in there. Did a sterling job out on the right. Then for the midfield uh, two, we obviously brought in Eric Dia. One of our first signings we brought him in from Tottenham just to show up because we didn't have any defensive-minded midfielders. We had lots of good midfielders, but none of them were ball-winning midfielders. And I really wanted one in there to make sure that they were doing the shuttling run. And if anything got past, they were doing the clearing up. Um, so we went and got um, Eric Dia. Obviously, Keita comes in second season for Liverpool. But before that, we had, obviously, Henderson that plays in there. Uh, we also had da -da -da -da, Emery Chan or Georgi, uh, Giuliano Wijnaldum. And there was someone else I think who played in there we may have sold, which makes me sad because I can't remember who it was now. But we had enough rotation in that midfield too anyway. 
to keep switching them around. And then the front four, we have uh, obviously Salah, who was impeccable the first season. Second season, not as much, but first season was outstanding. But he filled in a lot for Sturridge. Sturridge, when he was injured the first season. Uh, Mane out on the right, definitely need to keep him because he is an assist machine. And then you have Coutinho, who can play either at the left or through the middle. And you have Firmino, that can fill in that gap as well. And we had Sturridge up top, switching him in for Salah when they were not fit. So... Salah and Sturridge used to switch with each other. Coutinho and Firmino would also switch. Mane would stick as the right midfielder because we didn't really have anyone that, that could come in and perform as well. Oxley chamberlain used to drop in but never quite put the performances in that um, were necessary, I think, to to challenge Mane. We then, um, we also just missing, we did get Lee and uh, Goretzka as well in the second season on a freebie, but he didn't play that often, to be honest. But it was just came in as backup for these guys. So that... That was the mainstay. We had a lot of players that could play across all the positions and if need be switch sides depending on who needed to be rested and who was played. And we managed to keep a pretty solid team. But if you look here, if we've got our full seven subs in here, we've got another eight or nine players there waiting to come on as well. So we had a very big squad. So that's the tactic. That is exactly how we set up and played. Let's have a look at performances. If we look at the Premier League, let's go to history so we can see... So first season, you can see 38 games, 27-1, 96 goals for, 40 goals against. Uh, so if you look, actually 40 goals we had, we let in some goals, but we had one of the lowest in the league. 96, we were well and away the highest top goal scorers in the league. 85 points, won the, the league comfortably. Um, it didn't manage to get anything else that season. It wasn't, uh, we got knocked out of lots of cups very late on. But yeah, absolutely dominated in the Prem. And if you look at the current season... We won again. It was a lot closer. Man United stepped up this time. We got one more point than last time. One more, one less loss. Um, 86 points. We got no, uh, for, uh, 89 goals this time for 33 against. So much better defensively. Slightly worse um, in attacking sense. But still weighing above the next guys in terms of goals scored. So winning the Premier League two years in a row. We also picked up the Champions League. And there were some outstanding uh, victories in there. As you'll see, we started the second season... A little bit rocky. We got one, two, three of our four Premier League loss losses came in the first like seven or eight games. Um, and then we sorted ourselves out. And it was from, when was it from here? It was Leicester the last game we lost? Yes, yeah, so Leicester. We lost the Leicester game here on the 16th of December. And then did not lose again in the Premier League all the way through. So that was pretty special. Um, but we did obviously lose some games. We lost uh, in the EFL Cup final to Man United. We didn't quite get that last season. Um, we did lose in the um, FA Cup semi-final as well. But... Oh, where's my... Oh, my Champions League's not on there. We did win the Champions League final with a 2-1 victory over Tottenham. Um, which was brilliant. Look at that. 14 goals for Sturridge. 8 for Salah in the uh, Champions League. Sturridge just having a, an absolute stormer. Sturridge, Coutinho, Mane for assists. Just... These guys were amazing. So in the current season, we also we, we we lost on the 29th of December to Chelsea, and then again didn't lose again all the way through to the Champions League second leg uh, semi final, which we lost. If you look at that run of games there, the green is spectacular. <laughs> Draw a bit switch. That was funny. The green is absolutely spectacular. The second season just absolutely smashed it. And if you look at some of these victories, we had five nil at home. We beat Dortmund. We beat Paris Saint Germain 10-1 at home. Uh, we beat Bournemouth 6-2. We were scoring goals for these. Four goals, four goals. We, it, scoring isn't a problem with the tactics. Beat Man United 4-1 at home as well. Just absolutely dominated some of these rounds. And then came away, yeah, with that Champions League final win as the last, epi uh, last episode of the series. Spectacular. And before we leave you to go and recreate this tactic or download it yourself and try it with Liverpool, I thought I'd show you some of the ways that we actually... that it, the game was played. Um... Let's go for goals only. So I'll bring you the 10 one because uh, that was a good one to watch. But yeah, this is I'll show you some of the ways that the, the tactic worked and the, the characteristics of it in-game. So here we have a uh, uh, Paris Saint-Germain attack here. So Dia puts the tackle in early, wins it just outside our half, big ball over the top to Coutinho, throws it inside and storage scores. That quick from defence to attack. Just, we get the ball back straight away and go for it. Here we have another ball here. For, uh, we picked it up uh, deep in our half. And then look at that. It's just quick passes. One, two, three, four. Kieta gets it in. And Kieta has the box-to-box -box midfielder there. Even here, look, closing down before they can get their goal kick out. 
James in the corner. Cortino puts the tackle in early on the defender. And we get the goal. Sturridge waiting in the middle. Just constant attacking from these guys. So here we are. We're building up from the back this time. Keita, ball out to Cortino. Comes inside. We had three players there waiting to take that shot. Firmino getting the goal that time. And this is just happening daily with these uh, with this team. So here we go. Firmino. Gomez heads back. Oh, that was a bit of a fun one. Robin Nolly getting a goal. But yeah, big, quick balls. Lots of players attacking in the box. Here we go. Is this the actual power center? Look, Gomez there. Tackle, big ball forward, Sturridge waiting, Sturridge gets the goal. That's sort of just knowing that well, as soon as they win the ball back, they can play a long ball and there's someone going to be waiting for them. Um, oh, we scored a corner as well. I mean, we like to lock in some set pieces. Neymar Jr. on the ball. Look, Wijnaldum gets him, makes a tackle. Now it's quickly one, two, three into Salah. Salah's one on one, Salah scores. And that's this tactic is absolutely spectacular for that. Getting the ball back early, using that midfield, crunching in that midfield, winning the ball. And playing long balls out there and you've got three usually three people you're looking to hit for that attack and if you've got the right players they will score lots of goals for you so that is the gagum pressing style tactic that i have used with um my liverpool with my liverpool say with liverpool in fm18 if you would like to build it yourself go ahead copy it from here if not it is on the steam workshop and there'll be a link below in the in the description of the video or you just go on steam workshop search big the urban nerd and if you are going to use a tactic, let me know how you get on with it. And also, go and check out the series. Go and check out the Gagan Pressing Style series, um, where we actually you get to see us play through. You get to see these this tactic in action and how good it really is. But thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, do smash that like button. If you are new, please do subscribe. And I shall see you next time for some more tactic videos on FM18. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.